This is Art Talk, and this morning we're going to do something different. I'm Pamela Bond, the usual, and, uh, but we're going to do something uh, that we haven't done before. We're interviewing a poet, a Bulgarian poet, and possibly because it's very difficult to interview a Bulgarian poet because when he doesn't speak English, what we're going to do is read his poems to you, translations of his poems, and these are being read to you by another guest, Charles Hartman, professor of English and poet in residence at, the, uh, at Connecticut College. Dora Boneva, Lyubomir Levchev's wife, is also here. She is an artist in residence at the Griffiths Art Center, sponsor of this program. Now we can get started with Lyubomir Levchev's poems. Lyubomir is uh, an absolutely marvelous poet. I have read a lot of his work in translation, of course, and um, the nicest thing about him, possibly not really, but one of the nicest things about him is that he is so in love with New London. He's inspired by it, and the inspiration shows in his poems. And now we're going to have Professor Charles Hartman read some of these poems for you, particularly the ones that have been inspired by New London. Is that all right with you, Lyubomir? The first one is Early Morning in New London. Early Morning in New London. Clear skies prepare for sunrise. Birds and first light already a quiver. Thus creatures everywhere await the bright prospect of another day. Such is our common faith, religion of peoples and plants, in growth and expectancy. Now the moon Eastern dancer bows at curtain call. Bare maple trees fight each other with squirrels. Crumpled leaves falling skitter into church. Invisible ships loaded with night creak loud and sail away. Surrendering now, swift gray-green shadows trail violet tails to hover and hide this early settler's graveyard. Long ago, these stone gardens were planted on the highest sites. Below them, a glistening river. Above them, heaven is closer that the soul may more easily find its way. A breeze trumpets the arrival as I hear the last whispering of ghosts. Of course, William is right. The 18th century is far better than this, our 20th. And then the sun dawns on the white houses of captains. The reference to William is William Meredith, New London poet and a very good friend of Lyubomir Levchev. They have known each other for many years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 15, maybe. 15, 20 15. years, maybe. And William Meredith has visited Bulgaria? Yeah, yes. uh, William Meredith has... Uh, mm -hmm. Poet laureate in Bulgaria. Yeah. He's poet laureate <laughs> in Bulgaria. <laughs> Lovely. Poet yes. laureate in Bulgaria. Yes. Uh, he's a laureate uh, uh, international uh, poetry prize, uh, Nikola Vopsarov. He received very, in Bulgaria. Very, uh, the International Poetry Prize in Bulgaria. Yeah. yeah. And the translations were done in Bulgarian. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, and to book. To book. Yes. Um, Lyubomir Levchev is not only a poet, he's also a publisher, and he brings out a quarterly 
all the time with translations and with the work of uh, Bulgarian and European poets and also American poets. And these are translated wonderfully and freely. And the book also occasionally comes out once a year in English, the, uh, three, your publication. Three. three times a year. Th th uh, four, four times a year. Four times a year in Bulgarian. Yeah. Yeah. Quarterly. Quarterly. Quarterly, yes. Yeah. And, and but the English version also? Uh, it will be. <laughs> it will be. Oh, how nice. Jesus. Yes. That, that, that's, that's marvelous. Well, Dora has, uh, has also helped to inspire uh, Lyubomir as artist in residence here at the um, uh, Griffiths Art Center. She has painted many a picture of New London, and uh, some of those have also inspired her husband, Lyubomir. Thank you, Pamela. Uh, my uh, New London, uh, maybe this is my uh, last love. Your last uh, love, how beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yes, the many uh, uh, poem. Uh, for uh, first love. I see. But uh, yes, uh, last uh, love. I uh, think that's this beautiful. Is beautiful uh, love. Yes. This Very is, important. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, uh, my uh, my new London. This is my uh, uh, my uh, last uh, love. My. Uh, Last, uh, last, last supper. Last supper. Uh, your last supper, <laughs> maybe. yes, maybe. Uh, yeah. I hope it isn't your absolute last, but uh, I think that's a lovely idea. And I, you see, I was wrong when I said he didn't speak English. He does very well when he really tries. And Dora serves as a simply marvelous simultaneous interpreter. They have a wonderful relationship. Now, we must go on and, and read some more poems. The next one is A Street to Heaven. The subtitle is New London Sonnet. A sudden street draws me unexpectedly. I have never been here, yet I know it. The familiar houses, I know who lives there. I know that no one will ever dare to walk to the end of that street to see what is behind the pale, elusive border of its perspective. There are no houses nor farmland beyond. The last street lamp humbly bows its head and peers, stunned, into the precipice. The sky is interrupted there, unreached, resigned and unexpressed. That could be the sign of the end. My spirit you pretend to know something again. Charles was particularly enamored by that last line. <laughs> These are beautiful poems, don't you agree? They're wonderful. Yes, right? yes. Well, I, I think that the nice thing about poets is that they usually like each other's work. Isn't that true? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And, not and invariably, yeah. but, not uh, invariably uh, but when we like it, we like it very much. Yes. Well, um, I, I love that poem, and we also have New London Red which was inspired by the picture behind me. Can that be seen by the camera? That it's a picture, as you, any New Londoner knows, of the cemetery here, uh, a very ancient cemetery. And uh, uh, Lub Lubomir calls it New London Red. New London Red. The river flows into the ocean. Above, a cay of dreams, a crane of steel, stone temples, wooden castles, golden trees heavy with the fruit of oblivion. Everything in New London looks out on the wharf where an emblem is enshrined. With banners flying, the river flows into the ocean. All of this is best seen from the graveyard crowning the hill, chased by the late afternoon sun, the hill sails like the ship of a missing sea captain. Instead of a mast, a centenarian maple tree 
spreads its solitary shade. As Dora sketched it, I wondered aloud if we should call it the tree of life. The maple, pleased, rewarded me with a handful of red whispers. Who? Where from? Why? I heard the force of it, crushing markers and gravestones, grinding names to dust. Lord Maple, I come from the Antipodes, where heads are measured with bloody compasses. And if one single head stands out against uniformity, it is hanged from the anti-maple. You know too much. You think we are ignorant. Soar up then, go to heaven. The gods would welcome you as guest. They sent me up that way. My new god is evidently shaken. What else can he whisper to me? He knows not. He cannot say how I'll survive the coming day. He only knows for sure that heaven is not here. Lord Maple, it is enough for me to watch the wharf and see myself return to life. A neighbor of the clouds, I will earn my living washing flying saucers. And if I have died, the feeling is not unpleasant. To be embraced by endless serenity, to dissolve into a reflection of one's former self like a river flowing back to the sea. I hope those of you in the audience who are not familiar with poetry or who are not readers of poetry uh, will enjoy this probably more than you expected to. It's, I thought that that phrase about the maple tree rewarding him with a handful of red whispers and the little leaves coming down was so beautiful. I hope it'll inspire you to look at things more carefully and see them with different eyes. Isn't that what poets should do, should teach? You, you can speak aloud. <laughs> yeah, thank, you, thank, you, thank you, Pamela. Uh, this is my new, new London. Um, ma magic uh, city, uh, beautiful uh, city, um, very American history. Uh, yes, like full of American history. Full of history. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my new London, this is uh, my new friend. Uh, um, thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, I appreciate your work, and I particularly appreciate your love for New London. Those of us who live around it are not, um, don't see it with open eyes. We accept instead of looking, and, and it is a beautiful town, a really beautiful town. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Your last love. I'm speaking of your last love. This is New, this is new London. This, uh, this is a uh, uh, new, new, new book, uh, 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 Charles, Charles uh, yes. Hartman. Professor Charles Hartman has just published a book called The Glass Enclosures. Glass Enclosure. Glass Enclosure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do you have poems about New London? This is, this Not is many London. yet. Not, I see. This is a oh. uh, uh, book, uh, my friend, uh, oh, okay. very good poet, N Niles Bond. Niles Bond. Um, I am one uh, poem for uh, uh, Pamela and Niles. Uh, I have. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, uh, a poem uh, written for you, but it's not please, uh, not uh, uh, just uh, translate. <laughs> uh, good. This uh, uh, Niles Bond happens to be my husband and also a poet and a very good friend and a great admirer of of Lubomir. And he has very kindly, as he said, written a poem uh, recognizing their friendship. And uh, it, this is charming. It's not yet ready. It was uh, faxed from Sophia this morning, but the fax didn't work quite properly. <laughs> so we have to wait on that. But uh, Lubomir, the, um, our American friends out there, don't hear Bulgarian very often. Would you read one of your poems in Bulgarian? Кажи къде е радостта, поете. Кажи къде са точките опорни. 
Не ти успорват вече стиховете, макар че те са не по-малко спорни. Не ти отричат правото да страдаш, съгласни са дори да бъдеш нов. И в несъпротивлението падаш, като в една целувка без любов. What did you say? It's... We haven't heard a translation of this poem. It's about poets. It's two poets. I see, yes. Това е един въпрос, къде е радостта поета. The first line and the meaning is the question where poet, where is the joy? Joy and fear. Може би радостта на поетите е тук. And maybe the poet's joy is here. Yes. New England, this is a land of poet. New England is a land of poets. Very, oh yeah. Yes, it's true. Very many beauty American poets live here. Are living, yeah. Old and... Together, old and new poets. Old and new, yes. Dead and quick. Yeah. I think probably Charles, this is a good time to read the Sea of Liberty. I think so. I thought maybe we were on the same wavelength. Yes. This is a poem dedicated to William Meredith. A very beautiful poem. I want to say before I read it that we still all of us thinking together haven't quite figured out how to translate one word in the poem. Uh, it's the word which appears here as chasm, uh, but it only works in some places. The Sea of Liberty. The real change of epochs is a change of chasms. That granite shore is the monument of a missing ship. The specters of poets and the ghosts of sails still appear here in New England. When autumn moons loom large and the gold surge of maple snaps our last anchors, then Robert Frost is everywhere. He was not born here, yet reminders of him rise all around us. In the forests, long stone walls overgrown with moss. Perhaps they are the fences of forgotten realms, or maybe denizens of once deserted chasms. Our souls stumble, but frost climbs and destroys the walls. Between New York and Boston, between Yale and Harvard, being a poet is something possible, insignificant, and divine. Emily Dickinson, Edna St. Vincent Millay, Robert Penn Warren, Robert Lowell, one might meet their ghosts in a church, in a pub, or on some invisible shore. Eugene O'Neill sits upon the stone of the old New London wharf and contemplates the pale passengers of a missing ship. We are all heading for the clouds. Only William Meredith descends from the sky the way a Chinese manuscript unfolds along a ladder of silk paper. Every one of us has two worlds. The first created us, the next will swallow us. Only William triumphs over all his chasms. He presented one to me as remembrance. New England, the secret garden of the poets. The dog named Mikey, a loyal Labrador, leads me to the shore along a secret path. Red cardinals flutter in the branches, and suddenly, shimmering in front of me, is the hidden horizon. Atop the three-masted ship are two words in Latin. Unfurled by a futile wind, they flutter. Two words, mare liberum, and they're off. Well, wasn't that beautiful? And there were the names of the poets that Lubomir mentioned as poets of New England. Аз имам тук, сори, аз имам тук стари приятели, като Денис Левертов, като Джон Абдайк, и разбира се на първо място, Уилям Меридит и Ричард Хатайс. 
Но цяло чудо са новите ми приятели. Но са просто миракъл мои нови приятели. Американ поет. Зус Халан, като Нейк Познер, като Грей Джейкобик, Зус Халан. Но може би най-много поезия видяха в една фамилия, която не пише точно стихове, но прави поезия. Може би аз съм поезия, in a family which is not making poetry. Maybe two families. Maybe two families. Griffiths and Trip families. Yes. And for me, they became like your dream catchers. I feel myself like a dream catch in New London. A dream caught in New London, yes. And I have to thank them too. I can be, and to tell my gratitude. Finish home. Oh, has it occurred to you that the reason you have so many friends among poets and among people is that you are yourself so worthy of friendship? You don't have to answer. That's all right. Anyway, we are going into our public service announcement now, which is about New London. There are lovely pictures of New London. You will see Eugene O'Neill sitting there with his notebook on the, on the wharf and other parts of New London. Art is a process that fills our lives. See it, enjoy it. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Griffiths Art Center, New London, Connecticut. Back to New London. This is a poem inspired by the widow's walks on the houses of New London, and it's called Women Waiting for Ships, Charles. Women waiting for ships. Yes, these small white towers perched on the roofs were built in the days of the sailing ships. They remind us of lanterns or shattered cages from which the light has escaped. They bring to mind the fragile Greek files that once held tears. But such images today are empty of meaning because we ceased long ago to remember the sad purpose of these small, solitary towers, built for the watchful, forever waiting wives of sea captains. 
Now other oceans captivate our minds. Nuclear submarines vegetate at their piers in Groton. But they too are already vain epitomes of time. What is left then to fill us with life as we ride the long waves and after we return? All that is left is you, women, quiet, sad, magnificent, women, slender white towers, women waiting for whalers. You are our most enduring visions. We may vanish. You will never disappear. Oh, my beloved, wake from your sleep. I have returned. I enter willingly into the cage of fire. Myself is once again renewed. My heart sends you a signal. The lighthouse throbs with dactylic sparks, two short bright beams after a long spell of dark. Thank you. This is uh, a poem for uh, Dora, oh, Dora, my uh, New England wife. <laughs> uh, very good uh, painter, very authentic painter, uh, very r right friend. Yes, just exactly the right friend. <laughs> And a wife you. for 40 years? <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Nearly 40 years, yeah. yes. And, uh, and a very great painter, as, as you can see. I noticed that you are picking up your, one of your magazines, one of your publications. That's... Uh, Искам да, да се похваля, че yeah, публикувам uh, често във всеки uh, брой американски uh, автори. Това е много американско спосъбство. Uh, I have many American authors in uh, my magazine. Yes. Mm, във всеки брой има uh, такива неща. In uh, each uh, issue I have uh, something. Ето тук сме приветствали Бил Клинтон. We translated uh, 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 the... Uh, Стихотворението uh, на Мей Анджело. The poem of May oh, Angelou, Angelou, uh, yes, uh, when uh, at the inauguration of Presentation, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, И така ще бъде и в бъдеще. Аз искам да дам. And I'm uh, going to do it uh, in future to uh, uh, publish many uh, poets uh, uh, and uh, not just in the magazine but uh, the books in uh, translated in Bulgaria. Well, you have uh, quite a task ahead of you. But you enjoy it. I see how you enjoy it. Yes. Um, may I show the uh, the one in English, the Stolen Fire? This is my America. Oh, the, the other one is the same English. Uh, English. Um, oh, this is uh, um, I'm sorry. This is edition. Uh, um, International Poetry Forum. The Mysterious Man. Yes. Oh, I see. <laughs> and these are your poems? Yeah. In English, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and this is Stolen Fire, uh, an edition entirely translated into English, where, it, uh, it, where the originals were not English. There are some very interesting poems in here, and a lot of your poems translated into English, which are marvelous. And uh, this one, uh, uh, this is one of the quarterlies. This is a very busy man we have here. And um, uh, I think he's also uh, learning English uh, while here. He'll probably find that when he returns to Bulgaria, uh, he will have much more of a command of English than he has here. He'll have more courage to speak it. But I should tell you first um, that Bulgaria, you probably remember, was under Russian domination for a long time, and it was really a dominated country. And a lot of the architecture, the old beautiful architecture in the city of Sofia, the capital, has disappeared. And that is one of the reasons for um, Lyubomir's inspiration by our rather extraordinarily diverse architecture here in New London. So now I think, uh, are you reading one of, of um, ah yes, Roofs, a poem by Lyubomir Levchev, which is published in this book in English. 
This is a, a book of poets of Bulgaria edited by William Meredith, and the translation uh, or the adaptation of Lubomir's poem is by William Meredith. This is one of my favorites of Lubomir's poems. It's called Roofs. Grandfather's roof was made of slate, and weeds grew on its craggy shelf. Where is my grandfather's house, I ask? It fell in ruins all by itself, they tell me. Look how we've paved the yard. And there is the old roof, stone by stone, flagging the court. But I can't believe that that strong old house collapsed on its own. It was a beautifully fashioned house, cozy in human kindness furled. But alas, it had the same defects as grandfather's vision of the world. The thick slate roof was terribly heavy, and the house itself had no foundations. Very slowly it sank in the ground with fate of all such houses and nations. I'm sure that old house didn't fall to pieces, but slowly, slowly of its own great weight sank till the roof is level with the earth, and now I walk like a cat on its slate. Box trees rise from the flues like smoke, while down below the hearth burns fair, the pot is boiling, nothing is changed in grandfather's lost Atlantis there. And father, a little boy, is curled in grandmother's lap, his eyes are wide. Quick, go to sleep now, the boogeyman is on the roof. Father listens, terrified. Yes, there is something there, he shudders deliciously, and hearing proof, he falls asleep and dreams, he dreams, my heavy footsteps on the roof. It is cruelly hard to build a roof that time's foundations can hold in place. The superstructure, as Marx would say, should never overload the base. And those who write should think of things as real as roof trees, strong and straight, Someone with lightning in his wings has started walking on our slates. Thank you, Beautiful. <laughs> That's a wonderful poem. Uh, it's because uh, uh, it's, it's not far. They, they will think, uh, people, that I'm uh, uh, writing just for New London, but <laughs> you see, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote a great deal before he came to New London. <laughs> But uh, this, so it's, a, it's a lovely poem, isn't it? It's a yeah, very yes, sly yeah. poem. Uh, yeah, it's yes, very, it is. very shrewd. Very shrewd, very yes. Um, and um, the way you declaim, declaiming is no longer considered an art, but it used to be an art, the oh, declaiming yes. of poetry. And the way you do it is simply marvelous. Well, good poems make us do it. I uh, think so, yes. Yes. In the, in the days before television, uh, declaiming was uh, very much an art on stage, and one went to hear people who read well. Berta Singerman comes mm. to mind. Um, and uh, uh, poems were very much part of family life. People learned poetry in school, recited whole uh, stanzas and whole pages and whole books and whole poems, but not anymore. We just hear them in delicious little interviews like this one. Now, uh, speaking of another house, you were inspired by Sapphire House, which is part of the Griffiths Art Center now. And uh, the Sapphire House has a, has a ghost. The ghost name is Ruth. And I don't know how Lubomir found this out, because I didn't know it. But this is the poem that Charles is going to read next. And it's called Ruth. The sapphire, of fiery blue or golden hue, is the gemstone of the creative spirit. Sapphire House is situated in New London at 33 Granite Street. For long years it was called the House of Armstrong. Who was he? A merchant. Of boat sails, perhaps? They no longer remember. But the clouds are knit of his fibers. The house is majestic, three-story. Here wood plays the role of marble, and the ionic columns make the entrance seem devout and holy. 
although the rear walls more closely resemble the shaggy coat of a forest magician. People enter and exit, play their parts and disappear. Only one resides permanently, the ghost of the house, named Ruth. She throws cutlery, shifts the furniture, gulps the French wine, and appears indecently in the sleep of boys. Most people seem to dislike Ruth. They fear her. They ask themselves, how many centuries has that child lived? What does she want? I will stay here for a time, and then I too will disappear. A pale globe shines in the sky. I can see a halo, the radiance that used to predict a change in the weather. And in that lunar globe floats the heart of a dead god, preserved in spirits. Ruth, we know each other well. You are that ironic force which is forever rearranging the things inside us and us inside the things. Ruth, shift our furnishings again. Shuffle these words for me. Shuffle the images of the world and deal them once again. Perhaps this time I will be dealt the face card I have long sought with the sightless children in mind. I delve into the sapphire night. Stars, rain, and I am close to God. Beautiful. Uh, sapphire House is, as he said, on Granite Street. And you might like to have a look at it someday and see it through Lubomir's eyes. These, um, Lubomir's inspiration is, is uh, quite astonishing to me. Um, I am astonished by how many, how many times you mention God. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not good to, to, to very often to tell this word. Uh, it's uh, forbidden in the, the <laughs> but uh, it, it was forbidden in, in the ten uh, no in uh, ten uh, um, uh, gods. Uh, uh, one does not yes. speak of uh, uh, not God, uh, yeah, um, for fear without, that God may notice yeah, one. Without, uh, yes, uh, yeah. And yet the job of the poet has, for thousands of years, been partly to praise the local gods. The to local keep gods, them, exactly. To keep them happy and to keep the world going. Yes. It's, uh, it's why I'm speaking uh, very often here with, uh, with the Lord. The, <laughs> it's, the gods. It's why. <laughs> yes. Um, the, uh, uh, Bulgarian word for God is bok. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. B O K. Bok. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I have not uh, told you yet that um, the Bulgarian alphabet is a Cyrillic alphabet, which makes it much, much prettier than ours, uh, but of course impossible to read uh, for us. Uh, you have no difficulty. <laughs> It's closer to the ancient Greek uh, alphabet. I see. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know why, but many uh, alphabets uh, uh, were born in the uh, Balkan Peninsula. Yes. Even the Gothic, uh, 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 it's created uh, when the uh, gods uh, were there on the Balkans. But even the Gothic, I yeah. see, when the goths were there. Yeah. Yes, I see. Uh, that's surprising. Yes, one wonders why. Uh, also, we discussed the other day, that's where uh, a great many singers come from, your part of the world, Bulgaria. Orpheus. Orpheus. Yes, Orpheus. Yes, of course. His places. Yes. 
I think we have time for just one more poem. Um, may we have Winthrop's Mill? Winthrop's Mill is pictured. Uh, do we have a picture of, of Winthrop's Mill? It's uh, the mill that has now almost, not quite disappeared, but it's under the bridges. It's very hard to find. So if we may have Winthrop's Mill. Winthrop's Mill. It is now only a memory of its beginning. Yet, noting how little remains of this monument to the past, I would guess that its beginning is sealed inside it, like a runaway slave escaped from a plantation or a shaman of an Indian tribe, burned yet prophesying still. It is not water but time that turns the wheel. The millstone of vindication rolls and grinds all to rubble beneath its weight. A town is born, then set afire. Reborn from the ashes, it flourishes anew, and so on, and ever so. Everything seems crushed, fine ground, Pequot, Niantic, Namsok, in a screech of rusted metal. Yet the memories of mills gush down their wooden leets. Drawings of mills in an ancient book show a knight tilting at windmills, unaware of that future time when he would become me. Fast-moving streams wind through the meadows where swallows, crickets, foxes still seek the rhythm of the mill. It would appear that all has been ground down except the world of the survivors, the present-day labyrinth of metal overhead, the city on the estuary the Eugene O'Neill Pier, where all is calm and animals no longer fear men. Now only the wind has a right to tear off branches, hearths heaped high with grain and answered prayers await their turn. A band of reapers spends the night beside the fire of an old faith that tomorrow there may be bread for us all, our daily bread, hard and sweet like this granite coast. Well, that's the last poem that we have time for. But uh, eventually we'll be able to buy these poems or see these poems published in New London. And I want to thank Lyubomir Levchev, splendid poet from Bulgaria, and his wife, Dora Boneva, splendid painter from Bulgaria and wonderful interpreter, and Professor Charles Hartman, poet in residence and professor of English at Connecticut College and declaimer extraordinaire. Thank and, you for... And Pamela, Pamela Bond, oh. <laughs> very good writer, uh, very hard uh, spirit. Thank you Thank very you. much. <laughs> Uh, this is the end of our art talk today. I hope you enjoyed it. It was quite, quite different, uh, but I liked it. And I hope you'll tune in for more, if not of the same, certainly of more of the artists that surround us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.